recognized. Thank you. Um, what is our next destination for America in space? The next destination for America in space, and I'm not being trite when I answer this, is the International Space Station. We've got to get there four more times this year. Uh, the big, the long-term destination, after we successfully close out the space shuttle program, uh, the ultimate destination is Mars. And there are intermediate points that we are going to have to get to before we are capable of going to Mars. If you gave me all the money in the federal budget today, I could not get a human to Mars. I could not morally put a human in a spacecraft and launch them on an eight-month mission to Mars because I do not understand the radiation All right, so what is our next destination in space? The next ultimate destination is no, Mars. No, the next one. Congressman, the next destination, as I said before, is the International Space Station. And All we've right, got let's to do that not be trite, right, then. What is the one after that? It's Mars. So there's nothing in between, as far as you're concerned. But there are intermediate stops what on are the they? way there. What's the next one? The moon is a, is a destination. Lagrange points are destinations. Which one is next? You mean, where do we go immediately next? Is that, is that the question? That's what next means. Congressman, I, we are in the process of developing a program. I will, ha I will have to be able to give you the details, and I will come back and make it for the record in the coming months. So why are we even talking about how to get to the next destination? We don't even know what that is. Congressman, we do know what it is. We know what, what it is. What is it? Congressman, I, you know, we can go back and forth uh, forever. We seem to have to here. I'm looking for an answer. Okay. The next destination in the Constellation program was the moon. After what about that, now, was, since you're uh, planning to eliminate the that? program of record and the program to which we are working right now, uh, because you have told me that I have to continue to, to work the Constellation program, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the 2011 budget, but if you ask me right now, the next destination is the moon. Okay, good. Um, now, the Augustine Report uh, came up with four options and several sub-options or alternatives within the options. Which one did the administration adopt? The administration adopted the recommendations of the Augustine Report, which, which was the flexible option? path. Which option? The flexible path. The flexible path. Yes, sir. Okay. So you, that, you that think that... That was the recommendation of the Augustine Committee. All right. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I did read the report, and it seemed to me that the flexible path involved continuing the Constellation program. Is that a fair statement? Uh, the Constellation... You know, the Augustine Committee did not recommend cancellation of the, of the, of the Constellation program. That's so correct. then I'm right. Uh, you're right that they did not recommend cancellation of the Constellation program? Uh, the, yes, flexible right. the flexible path, in path included continuation of the Constellation program. The, the flexible path did not necessarily include continue. I think you, you, you're cherry-picking from the report. The, pr the report said... I just want to know why you had all these people come together, the people who knew the most about the space program, and then you ignored their recommendation to continue the Constellation program. Congressman, That's what they, I'm did not, they did not recommend continuation of the Constellation program. What the they flexible said, path did. C Congressman, what the report said was that they find no technical challenges in the Constellation program that cannot be met the way that NASA has always met them. However, to do so will cost a significant amount more than anyone will reasonably be able to place in a budget. Uh, All right. Regarding the budget, it seems to be your plan to put people in space through commercial programs. Is that correct? I intend to put people into low Earth orbit through commercial programs. How often has that happened so far? Uh, we do it today. Explain to me. Go ahead. Well, today uh, I go out and, and I pay uh, USA to operate the space shuttle out of the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the vast majority of my workforce right now is, as Congress, Congresswoman Edwards mentioned, uh, Eighty-nine percent of the workforce in the shuttle program today are, con are contractors. So you consider the space shuttle program to be a commercial program? I consider the space shuttle program to be evidence that, that commercial entities can successfully just operate. Please uh, answer the question. My time is limited. Yes. Okay. So what's wrong with continuing it then? We would not, I do not think it would be wise to continue the space shuttle program beyond the, the four additional flights that we're on track to fly right now. I think that would not be prudent. But if one's commercial and the other's commercial, what's the advantage of switching? The advantage is that we, are, we relieve ourselves of the, the responsibility and the cost for operating and maintaining infrastructure as we do today with the space shuttle program. Isn't it true that commercial entities have never put a man in orbit? Ever? Commercial entities have put every human in orbit that we, the United States has flown. 
if, uh, and, and you can take that up with North American Rockwell or Boeing or the United Space Alliance. Honestly, I'll tell you, my time is up now, so I'm going to tell you this briefly. I think that what you're doing is taking a shot in the dark. You have no way of knowing if any commercial entity will ever be able to put a man in orbit, no matter how much money you throw at them. What you're doing is you're taking NASA's manned space program and making it a faith-based initiative. I yield the rest of my time.